In our previous video, we discovered what Scrum is and how we can use Scrummy.com to create an easy Scrum board. In this video, we're going to start filling out that Scrum board. We're going to create our stories on the left side of the board. Now, our task is a little bit easy here because we already have a finished product we can look at. Now, okay, I know this interface is a little bit busy. Uh, it is honestly nine years old with very few changes. And that's because I'm a programmer, not a user experience type. So I want to worry about it working. So a few things that we're going to want to do. Uh, first of all, we're going to want to have an advanced user interface where we have a consistent look and feel from page to page. In other words, you'll notice as I search on Redbud and we take a look at the results, the top and the left navigation are consistent. We have a menu across the top. We have nav across the left. We have a list of results. We can click on a result, and then we can see uh, details about the red bud. Some details about the plant itself as a scientific definition. In other words, uh, does it work with dry soil? Is it native? How does it do in full sun, deep shade, so on and so forth? Uh, as we scroll down, we can see pictures of the red bud tree. By the way, one of my favorites and an outstanding specimen for Cincinnati. And you notice that the top and left nav, again, stays consistent. So those are some things we can make stories from. Now, we also might have some stories on integrating with mobile. So one of them would be collecting GPS positions with a mobile app. Now, we're not going to write a mobile app here. That's what our mobile app development class is. But we could have a user interface and maybe some tests where we could upload plants at specific GPS locations and then put them on the map. So we want to think about dependencies there an interface that could receive GPS information, and also a Google map that's going to do some integration for us. Okay. Additionally, we need to add plants, right? Because we can only search for plants that we have added. So we're going to need some kind of administrative console that will let us add plants. So lots of, th lots of things that we can consider. Uh, environment setup we've mostly done, but for sake of completeness, I will add some of those tasks. We had prepare IDE, our development environment. That, you know, this minimum will give these two hours. Uh, let me just get rid of this guy. Okay. Then we had install Tomcat. Okay. And then we had, it, oops, no, 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 don't get rid of that. Okay. Uh, we had install JSF or use implement JSF is probably better. Okay, and again, more, more of those to come. Okay, so, uh, okay, we also, we, we started our search screen, create our first XHTML page. I think we can call that one done. Okay, uh, create a results screen, just basically a stub. Okay, so we'll say maybe two points or two, uh, two hour, hours on that. Okay, we're going to have more to do for that. Let me make a new story, and we're going to call this Enhance User Interface. Okay, for Enhance User Interface, we know that we're going to want to maybe use a third party theme, like Prime Faces. Okay, and we've integrated, so we've actually, we've already integrated that. We just need to use some more advanced components. So why don't I call this one integrate third-party theme? Uh, we'll give that two. I'll sign it to me. Save. And because we've already integrated it, and by integrate, I mean we've, we've added it to our Maven repository. I'll go ahead and move that to the right. Now, I'm in, by the way, typically we would decide all these before we start working on them. So it's not like we always move them all the way over to done. Let's say implement advanced controls like uh, the autocomplete. So if you see on, and we'll give that, we'll give that maybe four hours. Assign that to me. We haven't started that yet. If you look on plant places, uh, you'll see on the main screen. Well, first of all, something to think about. This screen to me makes a lot of sense. It's a search screen, makes a lot of sense. But you know what? I told my wife to search for a redbud tree once when this was the only search screen. And she said, where do I put redbud? And I realized, you know what? It just isn't, it's not intuitive. It's not user friendly. So I moved this screen down to kind of a deeper 
uh, level, something you have to click into. And right on the home screen, there's a search. Now, let me ask you, a plant is made of genus, species, cultivar, and common name. Which name do you put here? And the answer is any name that you want. So if I put redbud, you see it's going to autocomplete with redbuds, but I could also put Circus, which is the genus for redbud. It's going to give me options again. Canadensis, which is the uh, species for redbud. Uh, I need to spell that correctly. Canadensis, there we go. You put in whatever name you want. So that's what I'm thinking about when I say an autocomplete text. Okay. Now let's also say uh, we want a template for menu. Okay, so that we have a consistent look and feel across the application. Oh, not 34. Let's give that one four hours and assign that to me. So we want the same menu uh, from page to page, just as you saw here. Maybe a top nav, maybe a left nav. To be honest, back in the day, top and left navs were very common. At this point, I think you would be okay with just a top nav. The left nav is really just clutter. Uh, or, let, or, you know, one or the other. You don't necessarily need both. You want something that's going to look good on mobile. Okay. Uh, then we'll also have some kind of menu. Okay, and that maybe will give uh, three hours and assign that to me. Okay, so that's a task we can work on pretty quickly. Uh, after that, we're going to want some kind of admin console where we can add plants. So let's say an add modifier, just to maintain if you want. UI. Okay, that might take, uh, gosh, I don't know, uh, maybe four hours. Assign that to me. Okay, we're going to need some business logic for adding plants. Okay, we'll give that one, say, um, three, hour, oh, three hours and assign that to me. Okay, uh, let's say persistence logic. So we'll say DAO for that. DAO will say three hours and assign to me. Okay, now we start to get tricky. Create database. Who knows? Uh, I'm going to say five hours and assign that to me. But that's not all. We also have to connect to the database. Probably with something like Hibernate, which is object relational mapping. Uh, that's going to be maybe four hours and we'll assign that to me. Okay, we want to create unit tests. Now, there are two schools of thought here. Uh, one is that creating a unit test is implicit within the task itself. And that typically is the case. Uh, that's what I would do. I wouldn't make a separate task for that because the definition of done says these tasks that are unit testable uh, should have a unit test as part of the task. Well, I'm going to call this one out as a separate one just because I'm going to make that a separate lesson that we're going to do together, and I want to make sure I don't forget to do that. So unit test, we're going to use something called Makito there, uh, which is pretty neat stuff. I think you'll enjoy that. Okay, uh, connect to database, create database. We also might want to make a uh, create DTO or data transfer object. That's easy. That's just what uh, transfers data across the layers of our application. So that's our admin console. After that, we can do a search for plants. We can only search for plants once we've had them. So for this one, uh, we might have user interface. Okay, we'll say maybe uh, three hours on that. Okay, uh, we might have enhance DAO for searches. Okay, since we've already created the DAO above, we'll give that one three hours. Okay, and we'll say enhance business logic. Now, business logic, uh, sometimes you'll hear that integration layer, service layer, something like that. Uh, so you might see me use those, change inter those terms interchangeably. Okay, and then once again, we'll create some unit tests for this. Okay, we'll make that three hours because we've already done a lot of the testing up here. Okay, now we need to think about pre creating a JSON feed. These are huge these days. Uh, JSON feed is going to make it easy for us to do a mobile application. So we might want to think about some DAO logic, uh, and we'll give three hours for that. And then we might want to think about some transformation logic. Okay, and we'll give four hours for that. So transformation means take these results from the database and convert them to a JSON feed. Okay, so this is where we're providing JSON data. It's not necessarily uh, where we are consuming JSON data. 
because we're providing JSON data, we might want to leverage some of the business logic that we've created up above. So this might not be a straight persistence mechanism because we're providing data, but we're providing data and we're adding value to it through our business logic layer. Okay. We also have a consideration for upload GPS. Uh, for upload GPS points, uh, we're going to need to do something like have some kind of receiver of data. Uh, that's really going to be kind of like a, again, kind of like a UI, UI layer without the UI. So it's going to be a layer that sits on top of business logic, and then that business logic persists to the database. We don't know a whole lot about what this is just yet. We're just going to call it receiver of data, spelled correctly, of course. And since we don't know a lot, let's go ahead and estimate high on that. Okay. Um, after that, we might also want to think about maybe some uh, uh, specimens table. So enhance the database because we might need a specimens table. We might also need a, a, a user table. So who are our users? So we can track them and we can give them individual uh, lists of what they have uploaded. That could be fairly big. Let's go ahead and make that four hours. One other thing, we typically only task out the stories that we're going to work on in this sprint. I'm tasking out everything I'm thinking of. Just in this case, it helps me to kind of think through the interdependencies that we're going to have uh, throughout this semester. Okay. We might also want to think about Google Maps integration into our website. Uh, that could be about five hours. That's a fairly broad task. Okay. Uh, and then we might want to think about making a promotional video, something like that. So honestly, there's a lot I could still do here. There's, there's quite a bit I could still do. Enhance UI, I could add some kind of validation. Okay, we'll give that a couple hours. I think you get the idea. So I will continue to update this. But in your design document where I ask for a list of stories and a list of sprint tasks, this is fine. A little scrummy board with your stories on the left and the tasks on the right, uh, that, that's what I'm asking for in this assignment. Now, uh, do you have to do every story this semester? The answer is no, you don't. Uh, remember that we're going to pick the stories that we think we can accomplish for the current sprint, and we're going to work on those for this sprint. But remember that the product backlog, which is essentially these stories on the left, the product backlog will grow and sh shrink through the life cycle of our application. We're never done. Applications are never done. If you've ever written a mobile app, you know that because there are always new things, new designs, uh, new quality standards that you have to follow. So it's entirely possible this semester you might not get to all of the stories, and that's okay. It's also very possible that you might find that you're adding stories that you didn't think about before. I wouldn't add them to the current sprint, but add them to the backlog for the next sprint. So with that, I'm looking forward to seeing your scrum board. I will take a look at it and maybe add some advice. Uh, one thing you don't want to have is stories with the same exact tasks from one to the other. You also don't want to make this, the uh, tasks too general, like make the UI, make the UI, make the UI, and then uh, make the persistence, make the persistence. Try to make sure that the task is descriptive of the story. So I look forward to seeing your scrum board, and I look forward to giving you feedback. Thank you.